The Game Awards, the pinnacle of recognition for developers and celebration of gaming culture. Or at least, that's the idea. Every year, the ceremony delivers unforgettable moments, but not always for the right reasons. From cutting off heartfelt speeches to bizarre stage invasions, today we are diving into our Game Awards controversies that left the gaming world stunned. Let's get started. Winning an award is the ultimate validation for months, sometimes years of hard work, late nights and relentless creativity. So imagine this. Larian Studios, the brilliant minds behind Baldur's Gate 3, take the stage after winning big. It's an emotional moment. They want to pay tribute to a team member who sadly passed away during development. But just as they are getting into it... Along the way, we, we lost quite a few people also. So we want to dedicate this uh, to all people we lost and especially uh, to Jim, our lead cinematic, uh, artist uh, who passed away uh, in the last night. That's right, the Game Awards gave them a mere silver of time to honor their colleague. Meanwhile, earlier in the evening, lengthy skits, trailer reveals and celebrity appearances got all the spotlight. Don't get me wrong, we all love Keanu Reeves yelling <laughs> You're breathtaking! But when a heartfelt moment gets sacrificed for what feels like filler, it's no surprise the gaming community was outraged. This all begs the question, what are the Game Awards really prioritizing? Now let's talk about the Game Awards voting system and fair warning, it's pretty lopsided. Here's how it works. 90% of the final decision is made by a jury with only 10% left up to fan votes. Sounds reasonable on paper, right? After all, the jury is made up of professionals professionals. But here is the problem. Many of those professionals aren't exactly gamers. The jury pool includes outlets like the LA Times and Entertainment Weekly, Rolling Stone, Pride.com. These are respected publications, no doubt, but they are more known for covering Hollywood gossip than the intricacies of gaming. This creates a perception problem. Fans feel like their voice, the voice of the people actually playing the games, is just a check checkbox at best. And when a fan favorite games get snubbed, the outrage is immediate and loud. People start questioning if the awards truly represent the gaming community or if it's just an insider party where journalists with little connection to gaming culture call the shots. This disconnect leads to moments of disbelief, like when niche titles or lesser played games seem to win over global favorites. Sure, critics might have a certain perspective on what's technically good, but does that really outweigh what millions of players loved and poured their time into? The debate rages on every year. Next up, the 2022 Game Awards, an event that will forever be remembered, but not for the reasons host Jeff Keighley hoped. That year, Elden Ring was the big winner. As director Hidetaka Miyazaki took the stage to accept the award, everything seemed normal at first. But then, out of nowhere, an unknown figure walked up alongside him. At first, everyone thought he was a part of the team, but as Miyazaki finished his speech, the stranger grabbed the mic and said, Thank everybody and say that I think I want to nominate this award to uh, my reformed Orthodox rabbi Bill Clinton. Thank you, everybody. It was bizarre, confusing, and downright hilarious to some, but the real kicker? He wasn't supposed to be there. The guy had simply walked onto the stage, passed security, and hijacked one of the most watched moments of the night. Now, you think an event of this caliber would have tight security? Apparently not. The internet blew up with memes, but underneath the laughter was a serious question. How did this even happen? What if someone had more malicious intent. The incident highlighted a glaring oversight and made everyone question how much effort goes into safeguarding the show. Sure, we got a legendary meme, but at what cost? Finally, no Game Awards controversy list would be complete without the classic debate. Why wasn't this game nominated? 2024 was no exception. Games like Silent Hill 2 Remake, Tekken 8, and even Dragon Age The Veil Guard were glaring omissions in major categories. Fans were especially 
really vocal about Silent Hill 2, a beloved classic that got rave reviews but was seemingly ignored. And then there is the flip side, questionable inclusions. The most divisive? DLC content making its way into the Game of the Year category. Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth 3 being nominated sparked outrage. DLCs are great, sure, but does a downloadable expansion really deserve to compete with full-fledged games? For many, it felt like a slap in the face to developers who worked on entirely new titles. The issue isn't just about what gets nominated, it's also about categories. Sometimes games are placed in spots that don't make sense at all. A cozy indie title might get lumped into best action game, while a sprawling RPG ends up under best narrative. It's like the organizers are playing their own game of pin the tail on the genre and it's the fans who end up frustrated. And there you have it, the biggest controversies that have defined the game awards. Love them or hate them, these moments keep us talking and in some weird way, that's a part of their charm. What do you think? Should the game awards change their ways or are these controversies just part of the package? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more gaming deep dives.